Toronto may be famous for its shops and theaters, but from up on the roof of the main sewage treatment plant, all you can think of are its millions of sinks, drains, and toilets. Landfills, dumps, and incinerators are the darlings of the environmental press, but everybody likes to forget about the sewer. As a public service, we thought you'd like to see where your goes. Incoming sewage flows to a deep well across the street. Five huge pumps over there lift the sewage to a height where it can flow by gravity through the rest of the plant. The first stop is the grit tanks. They have covers on them so we can't see anything, but the idea is to let abrasive sand and grit settle out. At the end of the grit tanks are bar screens. These are continuously moving, self-cleaning screens that remove any large insoluble items. When you look at what they catch, you can understand instantly why they're self-cleaning. You thought this stuff would never be seen again, didn't you? See where that steam is coming through? All the grease? After the grit tanks, the sewage is mostly liquid. Well, mostly. One of the big mysteries of life is how these things get inflated in the sewer. This is one of 12 primary settling tanks. The ridge across it moves slowly from end to end. At the moment, it's on its way to the input end of the tank, using a rubber blade to skim grease on the top into a conveyor. It dwells here for about six minutes. This is the grease skimmer retracting for the ride back to the other end. On the ride back, the bridge's underwater scraper wipes settled sludge off the bottom of the tank. Most of what went down the toilet is suspended in lots of water. The water flows into aeration tanks. They're covered because the process, well, stinks. Inside the aeration tanks, aerobic microorganisms chew away at the bad stuff, turning it into carbon dioxide and cell mass. Air for aeration comes from huge blowers. From the aeration tanks, the water flows to final settling tanks. This would be a good point to make a confession about this story. It's impossible to follow the exact flow of everything in the plant. For instance, the aerobic microorganisms and their byproducts are also flowing into these pools. They're scraped off the bottom and some are sent back to the aeration tanks and where the heck did they come from in the first place? Well, that would get us ahead of the story. Trying to follow all the nuances will make your head spin and you might fall into the pool. It's starting to look like water now. Whoops. That's why they have railings. We'll have to stick to the highlights. The water in these pools is flowing into Lake Ontario. As it does, chlorine is injected to zap any remaining pathogenic microorganisms. Pathogenic microorganisms, that's what we used to call germs. The disinfected outflow is returned to the lake underwater about 1,000 meters offshore. That dark spot is turbulence, not dirty water. Next to the final settling tanks, we found a pile of these. People in the sewage business don't like these very much. They have to be pulled out of every nook and cranny. I think that one of the things the world could use is a better definition of disposable. Sludge from the bottom of the primary settling tanks is sent to the digesters. There are 16 of these at the plant. Raw sludge is mixed with some sludge from the final tanks. The final tank sludge is high class. It contains lots of bacteria, fungi, and protozoa. The digester works just like your tummy. The result is methane, and well, we'll get to that. The digesters are kept at about 35 degrees Celsius, using their own methane as fuel. Periodically, the digesters need to be cleaned, so we got a good look at one. Hi right, guys, it's Candid Camera. Hey, 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 <laughs> So what's it like in there? What's it like in there? Come on in. I don't know if I can fit. I'm too fat, thank God. Yeah. Are you finding anything good in there? Oh, you don't want to tackle what's in there. No buckets full of money or anything. I only wish. This job would be easier if we didn't flush textiles, wood, and plastic. Basically, digested sludge is burned, but First, you gotta get the water out. There are several dewatering methods. Again, the basics. These reactors are officially a wet air thermal oxidation process, but everybody at the plant simply calls them the cookers. 
Under high heat and pressure, the cell walls of our tiny organisms are ruptured, making the dewatering process easier. There are different dewatering machines, but this one's the most visual. This is a vacuum drum coil filter. It speaks for itself. The dewatered sludge is incinerated right on the site. Exhaust from the incinerator passes through a water scrubber to make any solids too heavy to go up the stack. The scrubber water is mixed with ash from the incinerator and dumped into one of two lagoons. About once a year, ash from the lagoons is trucked off to landfill. At the moment, this ash checks out free of anything hazardous, but we have to remember, all of our sewage treatment plants are designed to handle water, toilet paper, pee pee, and poo poo. Household hazardous waste, motor oil, well, gee, I don't want to give you any ideas. There are proper methods of disposal for just about everything these days. We could also send a nice thank you to the folks at the treatment plants by not flushing textiles, wood, or plastics either. Ah, uh, the audience not hearing much, you know? 